Hi guys, today I am going to explain uh, double enter pool keeping tests from Kaplan. So let's start. Before starting this uh, questions, let me just mention that there could be some mistakes and I will try to fix these mistakes. So I advise you that do not focus on the mistakes. Just try to grasp the essence of what I am saying. So let's jump into the test number 31. Let's start reading the subject first. Oscar runs a sole trader business selling computers. On the 12th of January 2017, he employed his daughter as an administrator for the business and took a computer from the storeroom uh, for her to use in the office. What is the double entry for this transaction? The key point in this test is the intention if you buy some asset with the intention of that uh, you will sell uh, the asset at least 12 months then it will be your expense cost of sales yeah cost of sales is just uh, an expense but if you change your intention on that then it could be your uh, non-current asset as we can see in this example that's why we should deduct the amount of the computer uh, from cost of sales and add it to non-current assets that's why our correct option will be b debit non-current assets credit cost of sales before choosing this option you should know one more point that the cost of sales is uh, expense and all the expense are debit and if you want to decrease any expense you should credit it and non-current assets all as all the other current assets uh, together are debit and if you want to recognize that uh, computer as an asset you should debit it that's so simple and by the way do not do not choose the option a because oscar's girl doesn't take the computer for her personal use that's why the co option a will not be the correct option I hope you understand the test number 31. And now let's jump into the next test uh, number 32. Which of the following pairs of items would appear on the same side of the trial balance? So let's see. Option A, drawings and accruals. Guys, accruals are liability account and uh, all the liability accounts are credit. Uh, a is the is not the right option b carriage outwards and care uh, prepayments it doesn't matter if it is carriage inwards or carriage outwards both are debit both are expense just before recognizing them as expense we should include carriage inwards uh, in cost of sales and recognize carriage outwards as expense and prepayments, prepayments are always debit. Uh, you may consider it as a receivable. For example, you give that money to your friend and waiting for, he will pay you back. Until that time, you may recognize that money as your asset. Uh, option C, carriage inwards and rental income. Yes, carriage inwards is debit, as we mentioned it before, but rental income is the opposite side the money you have earned it means as all the other income accounts rental income is represented in credit that's why option c will not be the right uh, option uh, option b opening inventory and purchase returns uh, yes opening inventory is debit yes i agree with this but purchase returns the purchases uh, normally are debit then purchase returns should represent it should be represented in credit so our correct option is b let's jump into the next uh, question 33 test number 33 a double entry system of bookkeeping normally results in which of the following balances on the ledger accounts briefly we should look at each of the following accounts example assets uh, may uh, it could be account name or it could be asset or liability we should consider if it results 
as a debit or as a credit balance. So let's read first and decide which of the following is the correct answer. Option A. Debit balances, assets and revenues. Yes, it's true, assets uh, normally result as a debit balance, but revenues should be represented in uh, credit normally. That's why we are not gonna... Option A. Option B. Revenues, capital and liabilities. Uh, liabilities also do not result as a debit balance normally. That's why option B is the, is the wrong option too. Option C. Assets and expenses. Yes, uh, assets and expenses are debit. Liabilities, capital and revenues should be represented in credit. That's why we are gonna choose option C as a right answer, as a right option. Option D, look at the capital where capital is not represented in debit. Test number 33 doesn't require extraordinary uh, knowledge, any extraordinary knowledge. If you want to solve this kind of questions easily, you just have to be sure which accounts are debit and which accounts are credit. So if you have any problem with this, go back to study text and read chapters related to double entry system of bookkeeping. Let's jump into the next question, next test, test number 34. Which of the following entries would be required to account for a reimbursement to the petty cash float of $125 from the bank account? The amount of cash doesn't matter here. As you can see in the options, we just have to be sure where to debit and where to credit this transaction. Just before thinking over this uh, double entry, consider that both the cash uh, and bank and petty cash are debit. And if we decrease cash and bank account, we should credit it. And if we increase petty cash, simply we should debit it. So our correct answer should be A, option A. And let's take a look at test number 35 now. Sasha has prepared a draft statement of profit or loss for her business as follows. We have extract from SPL. Sasha has not yet recorded the following items. Carriage inwards of 2300, discounts received of $3,900, carriage outwards. After these amounts are recorded, what are the revised values for gross and net profit of Sasha's business? Let's explain this question by use of Excel. And now we are using the method of true-false uh, approach. As you can see, actually we have this and we will make proper corrections on this side here and back to exam kit and put this amount to as we mentioned before in the earlier questions carriage inwards and carriage outwards both are debit balances we will include carriage inwards in cost of sales and carriage outwards will be recognize it as an expense and uh, included uh, in expenses so let's do this first first I'm increasing cost of sales amount by 2300 and increasing expenses by 1900 and fifty dollars and the last thing here we should do is more complex about true discounts received cash discounts received cash discounts received normally should be deducted from cost of sales I don't see that it said by BPP study text 2021 page number 241 and here you can see important point let's zoom in this to 100 percent yeah it seems clear now 
So we have important point here, as you can see. It says that cash or settlement discounts received are deducted from the from cost of sales in the statement of profit or loss. But in the answer, you will see that they have recognized discounts received separately after gross profit. As you can see here in the answer, they have recognized it. But I recommend that do not recognize discounts received separately. Just, just deduct it from cost of sales. And if you ask me why, then I can tell you this. Questions in the exam will be more likely according to study text rather than Kaplan exam kit. There could be a few differences between uh, Kaplan exam kit and BPP study text, but a few, very little. And in these cases, I recommend you stick to uh, study text. And in my solution, I will deduct discounts received from cost of sales. All I have to do is, is to decrease cost of sales amount by 3,900. And here we go. That's it. We have 114,200 gross profit and 36,250 net profit. I think we are done with this question and let's jump into the next question. 36. Uh, Elijah started by the way the oriental version of this name is Elias and I feel more comfortable when I call him Elias and I will do it so. Elias started the month with cash at bank of $1,780. What was the balance carried forward after accounting for the following transactions in June? Okay, let's read the following information one by one. First, Elias withdrew $200 per week to cover link expenses. Second, a customer paid for goods with a list price of $600 list rate discount of 5%. Third, an amount of $400 was received from a credit customer. Fourth, bankings of $1,200 from canteen vending machines. Let's do, let's just solve the question by way of Excel again. Drawings were $200 per week and considering that our uh, period is consist of only a month, there should be four weeks in a month and we uh, approximately and we, we should multiply 200 by 4 and we get 800. So let's record this in Excel. 800 drawings draw wings okay uh, let's record closing balance here closing balance and we need some underline here and function and I am deducting 800 from 1780 because, as you know, drawings decreases our cash at bank. And let's back to our question again and solve the second information. A customer paid for goods with a list price of 600 less rate discount of 5%. All we got to do is to decrease 600 by 5%. And short way of this is just uh, multiplying 600 by 95%. Okay, let's do it. And here are payment, payment, 
by customer. Okay. Now I'm going to multiply 600 by 95%. And when customer pays, we receive money. And okay, let's do it. And we have got here 1,550. Okay, let's back to the next information here. An amount of $400 was received from a credit customer. One more received and there is nothing extraordinary, okay? Let's just add 400 and the rest of the amount. 400 receipt. Okay. Let's do that. 400 and the last information. Bankings of 1200 from Canton vending machines. Okay, if you don't know what the vending machine is, then let me show you. Vending machine here, as you can see, this is the vending machine. You may place your vending machine in any uh, branch of your company or in a head office, and it will make some small income for you, so it will also bring you cash inflow. That's why we are going to add 1,200 vending machine, 100, 1,200, and here is the result. 3150 and I think we are done with this question it's over so let me just mention that before jumping into the next question you may solve this question by way of T account as you can see I'm not using T accounts in this kind of questions because I think it's easier way you're just adding deducting uh, figures and you get the result using T accounts could be some kind of time consuming That's why I don't recommend this T accounts in this kind of situations Now let's jump into question 37. Uh, let me just scroll down Okay, here we go after after corrections What should be the balance on the following account? when you encounter this kind of questions, I mean, which contain T accounts. First of all, what you have to do is to clear balance figure. I mean, here, 2745. I mean, this. Present like we don't have this figure, okay? And believe me, if you do that, you will solve 50% of uh the question which contains the accounts the account and in the next stage we'll record this amount in excel so let's do it and before doing that let me mention that this is a bank account okay and bank accounts are normally represented in debit and that's why i am going to show all the debit amounts positive and all the credit amounts negative and I don't care if these amounts are on the debit side or on the credit side, it doesn't matter. Let's do it according to my way, okay? First of all, let's take a look at this amount. 1,340, overdraft. Overdraft represents negative amount in your bank account, okay? Now let's record this as a negative amount. Your cash at bank at the start 
of the period is negative. And reimbursement of petty cash flow out. It should decrease your bank account and it also should be represented as negative. Okay. 45. Negative 45. Okay. Receipts from customers. Ah, thank God. We've got some positive amount here. Considerably high amount, 4,400. Okay. And let me just record this. 4,400. Okay. And I record this uh, as positive. Now, return of goods purchased for cash. Uh, and if we are talking about returns of goods purchased for cash, it means that we return the goods which we bought in the past for cash. And if we return these goods now, then we we'll take our money back, $50. Okay, it means that we should increase our bank account by 50 okay now what we have got here payments to credit suppliers payments to, to credit suppliers is our payments okay it's ours and it should decrease our money by 990 okay Let's just decrease it by 990. And what's the next step here? Rental income. And if you see some rent in your bank or cash T account, it means you get that money. Okay. We should increase our. cash by 1300 now finally we are going to take account the last figure here payment of electricity bill 700 and we should record this as negative it's easy doesn't require extraordinary explanation and now Let's look what we have got here. As a result of these actions, I got $2,675. And we are done with this question one more time. So let's jump into the next one. Question number 38. Ah, it should be easy. Andrea started a taxi business by transferring her car at a value of $5,000 into the business. What accounting entries are required to record this transaction? Before solving this test, open BPP study text. Where? Page number 295. And look what it says about drawings. The business owner may pay income into their bank account which had nothing whatever to do with the business operations. For example, the owner might pay dividend income or other income from investments into the bank, from stocks and shares which they own personally, separate from the business itself. In other words, there are no investments in the business statement or financial position and so income from investments cannot possibly be income of the business. These amounts will be credited to their drawings. It means that drawings account could be credited. So far, we thought drawings represent money or something else that you take from your business for your own use. But now things have changed. 
we can credit it now if we wish so based on the business entity concept business and its proprietor are separate and it doesn't matter if it is limited liability company or not and drawings account represents the contact between a sole trader or proprietor and business and when proprietor injects money into his business for example the business should credit its drawings account and the double entry will be like debit cash and credit drawings and if you think that proprietor should credit capital introduced account or capital injected account you should be aware of that there is no such thing as capital introduced or capital injected account there is only drawings account you can only encounter it as a formula like just like this okay and for reasons like this we are gonna credit drawings and debit our uh, asset account here it is represented as a car account five thousand dollars that's why the correct correct option is b i hope i was able to explain this question now let's take a look at test number 39 which of the following statements best describes the purpose of a purchase order briefly po i think there is nothing extraordinary to explain if you are not able to find the right answer then go back to study text open page number 46 and look what it says the main point here is that purchase order is sent by customer to his supplier we don't need to know more detailed information about the source documents let's back to the test and match the options with the key point option a it is shoot to a supplier to request supply of goods from them on terms specified within the order it looks like the right answer but before deciding this let's look over the other options option b it is issued to a customer okay stop right there it is not issued to a customer option c it is issued to a supplier okay as a notification of payment the option c is uh, about remittance advice it doesn't mean the po option d it confirms the price that will be charged by a supplier for goods supplied no 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 it's it's uh, absolutely something else and i don't want to waste my time on this so the correct uh, option will be option a now let's uh, jump into the next question question number 40 okay come here goods dispatch note is a warehouse document and when you dispatch your goods to customer you record them in your goods dispatch note and reasonably it's sent by supplier to customer that's why we are going to focus on the options starting with issued by a supplier and for this reason we ignore option a and b and choose one of the other two options and if you prepare a goods dispatch note it means that your customer already has received the goods or it's going to receive it in a very short period of time not at a specified future date that's why we are going to choose the option b option c test number 41 an invoice is best defined by which of the following statements option a an invoice is raised by a business and confirms on the amount due to be paid for goods and services provided but it doesn't mention that whether business sends it to customer or not that's why i don't choose this option b an invoice is raised by business and issued to a supplier no 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 stop right there normally customer receives uh, services and goods not supplier for this reason option b is wrong 
Option C, an invoice is raised by a business and issued to a customer, OK, to confirm amounts not yet paid. When a supplier issues an invoice, it doesn't mean to confirm something. The main aim of business is to request payment for goods and services provided. Hit this word, request, request. Therefore, we focus on this option and we accept uh, it as a right option. 42. And for the second test, we'll read all the sentences and decide if it is true or not. Business assets will always equal business liabilities. It is absolutely wrong, because business assets normally should be greater than business liabilities. And if we say business liabilities, it doesn't comprise capital. Business assets will always exceed business liabilities. Sounds solid, but in some cases, business liabilities may exceed business assets. And this is a sign of business asset deficiency. Business assets, uh, that's why the second option is false. Business assets include proprietor's capital. Business assets not only include proprietor's capital, but also the investor's money it could comprise. That's why the third option is false. Business liabilities include proprietor's capital. This is absolutely wrong because we classify capital and all the other liabilities separately. And as you can see, all the options are wrong, are false. So let's take a look at test number 43. Are each of the following statements about the journal true or false? For solving this question, just for info, uh, we record unusual transactions and correction of errors in journal. But all the other uh, usual transactions, operational transactions, will be recorded in uh, day books or in cash book. So let's start. The journal records all bank and cash transactions. It's not true. Cash transactions will be recorded in cash book or in petty cash book. First option is false. The journal records all accounting transactions. As I mentioned before, not all the accounting transactions, only we record uh, unusual transactions and correction of errors in journal. The journal is a book of prime entry. That's absolutely true. The journal records all credit sales transactions. All the credit sales transactions are recorded in sales playbook, not in journal. That's why the fourth option is false. Let's jump into the next question, next test. Test number 44. Let's continue. Number 44. During the year, Ferguson made the following accounting entries to account for the depreciation charge relating to motor vehicles. Uh, debit accumulated depreciation motor vehicles. Mm, credit depreciation expense motor vehicles. As you can see here, Ferguson has made the double entry record for the depreciation charge but in reverse. We should just correct this error. This is an obvious correction of errors question. So let's solve the question in a way that we solve any correction of errors question. And here we go. Okay, let's. Now, I, uh, I record here false. I actual version actual double entry debit accumulated depreciation credit depreciation charge F 
5000 and 5000 and I record here the true version of it and double entry for a new old depreciation charge should be like this debit depreciation charge credit accumulated depreciation okay like this record this like this and we are recording this and the last step is to look at the right version and wrong version and make the proper corrections and I say that I have debited accumulated depreciation by 5000 instead of credited by 5000 and if I wish to correct this error all I have to do is just to credit accumulated depreciation credit accumulated depreciation by 10,000 one two three okay and the same goes for depreciation charge and here we go debit depreciation charge by 10,000 okay and that's it here is your correction and if you've got any other, other idea to handle this question I advise abandon that idea because this is the easiest clear way of solution that you can use it so let's go back to exam kit find the right option look at the option B this is what we get after correction now just let's jump into the next question question number 45 okay let's do it during the year Redknapp made the following accounting entries to account for the increase in the allowance for receivables debit trade receivables ledger control account $4,300 credit allowance for receivables $4,300 what journal entry required to correct the above accounting entries to increase the allowance for receivables for the year and again we are going to solve one more correction of errors question just for saving time I recorded here the actual version of double entry and the true version of this double entry should be like that debit debit irrecoverable debts expense credit allow answers for receivables should be like this 4300 4300 okay let's correct this as you can see the credit side of this double entry had been recorded correctly that's why I'm not gonna touch it or I'm not going to make any correction related to credit side of this double entry Redknapp have debited trade receivables account instead of debiting irrecoverable debts expense account and as a result of this action Redknapp have sent some amount to statement of financial position instead of sending it to statement of profit or loss and just for additional information I'd like to mention that this kind of errors are referred to as uh, errors of principle errors of principle for correcting this mistake first we have to credit trade receivables account which Redknapp have debited mistakenly credit trade receivables by 4300 
and the next step is record this amount in the right account and recognize it as an expense which is uh, irrecoverable debt expense and I'm going to copy and paste this to a version of debit side double entry and that's it let's jump into the next question question number 46 okay during the year Allardyce made the following accounting entries to account for the cash proceeds received upon disposal of an item of machinery debit bank $2,500 credit sales revenue $2,500 and I think it's easy to predict what is being requested and once again we are going to correct some error and I want to mention that this double entry consists of three parts and receipt of cash is one of them and the credit side of this double entry should be disposal disposal account not sales revenue because selling one of your non-current assets is an unusual transaction and unusual transactions is not your operational activity and it uh, doesn't generate sales revenue all the earnings from the disposal of non-current assets should be classified as other income but the sales let's correct this error in Excel I have mentioned a true and false version of this double entry by referring to this double entries we can make the correction and we are not gonna make any change uh, for the debit side of this double entry as in the previous question I am clearing credit sales revenue balance and for this purpose I record opposite entry by $2,500 and I'm crediting disposal account which should have been recorded okay that's all let's move on the next question question number 47 part you is unsure of the accounting entries required to account for a contract between the receivables ledger control account and payables ledger control account for $1,250 what journal entries required to account correctly for a contract between the trade receivables and trade payables ledger control accounts I think I should explain in the first place what contra entry is just be aware of that your customer could be your supplier at the same time yeah it's possible and let's suppose that that customer's name is John which is also your supplier and in your accounts you have receivables from John as a customer and payables to John as a supplier with the same amount $100 okay instead of receiving this amount from John and paying him to, to John you are able to do nothing absolutely nothing okay all you got to do credit John's receivable balance uh, $100 and debit John's payable balance $100 and there will not be any payment or receipt additional unnecessary or redundant cash transfer transactions and for financial accounting purposes contra entry always decreases uh, receivables and payables control accounts at the same time and that's why we are going to choose option A debit credit payables ledger control account credit trade receivables ledger control account option C is a reverse entry 
and by looking at uh, option B you may ask this why don't we choose this option because my friend when you encounter choice between ledger control account and ledger just refuse ledgers in favor of ledger control accounts because ledgers uh, do not represent double entry system they may ledgers may represent your own credit control system but not your double entry system we will discuss this later don't worry about that and i suppose that you'll be able differentiate these two after studying control accounts and correction of errors in the syllabus and i hope my explanation is understandable so let's move on to the next question question number 48 what journal entries are required to correct account for the depreciation charge for the year of three thousand five hundred dollars relating to buildings and the amount here doesn't matter and the double entry for any depreciation should be like debit depreciation charge expense uh, credit accumulated depreciation and I suppose that this question doesn't require ex extraordinary explanation so let's move on to the next question question number 49 okay what are the accounting entries required to account for settlement discount received of $200 $50 from a credit supplier if I remember correctly we have encountered uh, this double entry before and I mentioned some nonsense about the credit side of this double entry but not about the debit side mm. but the debit side is easier just always debit trade payables that's all and if you don't remember or you start to listen to watch this video from this test go back to question number 35 and let's move on question number 50 okay Palios made the following account to entries to account for the purchase of goods on credit from a supplier debit trade receivables ledger control account $3,200 credit purchase $3,200 what journal entries required to account correctly for the purchase of the goods and credit from a supplier? So let's correct this error. And if you are falling asleep, drink some coffee, pay keen attention to detail. So let's not waste time and jump into the solution. And here I have recorded or false and true versions of this double entry and purchase of inventory is one of the easiest double entries to recite and when a company purchases some inventories records this transaction as debit in the purchase account and credit trade payables account and of course we are talking about the credit purchase and if it was cash purchase then we would record it in debit cash account sorry a credit cash account debit purchases will be the same in both cases cash and credit purchases doesn't matter and as we can see sole trader made this entry quite the reverse it means both the debit and credit side of uh, sides of this double entry have been recorded wrongly instead of crediting trade payables Sole trader have debited trade payables by $3,200 and for the purpose of correction we should credit trade payables account to buy twice of this amount and I record credit trade payables by $3,200 times 2 okay it gives us 6400 and the same goes for purchase account so we are gonna debit purchase 
by 6400 okay that's it let's jump into the next question jump into the next question okay question number 51 Bob used the following balances to prepare his financial statements as at 30th of April 2013 here are the balances totals and the business doesn't hold inventory no further adjustments were required okay that's all we got here and what was Bob's closing capital as at the 30th of April 2013 all you have to know is the accounting equation assets equal to liabilities plus equity and equity from this formula equals to assets minus liabilities and we also know that closing capital or closing net, net assets equals to equity from the formula we mentioned it and all we got to do all we got to do is to find all the assets and all the liabilities receivables are assets that's right we are going to take it into account bank loans and bank overdraft are liabilities and these two also will be taken into account but all the others for example drawings capital purchase and revenue rent expense bank interest hit and light expense are not qualified to be an asset from this information all the assets give us only 6000 and all the liabilities give us 5500 and after deducting all the liabilities from assets it seems we have already finished today's questions and I hope you'll find it helpful and it's my first time that I make my video in English there could be some mistakes but I will try to take this to the next level lesson by lesson step by step and each time I will try to do my best and thanks for watching this video until the end and if you really find this video find this lesson useful share with your friends who also study this paper and I will also try to do my best I think it's enough to play on your heartstrings so see you in the next lessons